I guess long story short, um, I was 16 when I moved here and I, you know, before that I grew up in the Northern Philippines, um, you know, mountain region and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, my brother and I are orphans, like our parents died in a, well, we were there too. Like we had like a very like bad, like vehicle accident and uh, my, my parents and sister and a lot of other people didn't make it. My brother and I um, survived and um, it's really, I guess it's really an educational moment for um, Canadians, how I got into Canada because, you know, there's a sponsorship process and everything, right? I was sponsored through the category of family class for orphans. So normally you cannot sponsor nieces or nephews. They're too, like the relationship is too far removed with the exemption of fully orphaned kids. So that's how I got to Canada. And, um, and because of, I was 16 when I moved uh, here, you know, I'm pretty uh, familiar with the culture. I'm old enough to have like memories and my viewpoint in life shaped by um, what I experienced growing up. But 16 is such a important age and stage for of a teenager's life you know what i mean so a lot of my young adult experiences are here and um, i remember growing up because you know i'm a pretty academically competitive person like english class like language and grammar are actually my favorite classes like i get like high 90s in english so um so adapting to here is actually um a bit easier of course i speak still a little bit like formally and if you give me a sentence i can break down its grammatical components like i we have, we've learned that growing up but um yeah like um, in, in my household, my brother and I, for the most part now, we still speak Tagalog to each other, except for his first year when he came here, because he came four years after me. And I'm like, I'm going to train you. I'm going <laughs> to talk to you only in English. And, you know, I'm going to take you to West Edmonton Mall and you're going to order our food and, you know, just to get his uh, comfort level. Um, yeah, I got... I got my citizenship in 2012 and I'm still considering doing my dual citizenship. The paperwork is just a little bit like... Um, challenging um, with my relatives. Um, a few of them are in Edmonton in, um, or in Canada, but I have relatives um, all over the world. So um, yeah, it's it's been a really fluid process trying to like reconnect or stay involved with my cultural community while letting my own values evolve because, you know, I guess I have a bit of an outsider's perspective. There's some cultural things that I really don't like. Um, for example, the concept of Filipino time, which is just being casually, chronically late for everything. <laughs> I hate it. Like, I am very respectful of people's time. I want to arrive early and get things done on time. So I, I'm like rejecting that entire cultural premise altogether. Um, but yeah, like, you know, my I think my language proficiency is pretty okay, although I get rusty with certain like common um, conversational words, which makes me worried. But um, yeah, like my husband is a born and raised Edmontonian. So that's mm. another like that we'll definitely explore as we as we get older he has been to the philippines a few times and what really surprised me is that all the fancy touristy places we've been to because we've, and we've been to a lot we went there for three months um he they, he finds them like kind of nice but what he really loved is the quaint little mining village where i grew up because it's so far it's so remote environmentally it's like actually like nice and pretty and cool we have pine trees there so like it's mm -hmm. that cool like evergreens everywhere um but um yeah so it's a bit of a, a rant but uh yeah like that's kind of you know it's a it's an evolving process right like staying connected to my uh my um my cultural community and identity i describe myself as filipino canadian um you know, i find it a bit awkward sometimes when um, people ask me right away if I'm Filipino or not. And I'm like, and I was like, yes, I am. Or I guess it depends on who asks. Like if it's like a fellow Filipino who asks, I feel a little bit more okay. But if it's a non-Filipino who asks, um, it's, it's a little bit awkward because um, what's the term that I like using? The occupational stereotyping comes up immediately afterwards when they're like, oh, you're Filipino? My nanny's Filipino. Like <laughs> All the healthcare workers I know are Filipino, and I have mixed feelings about it. You know what I mean? Like, on one hand, it's true, and at the same time, like we're here, like the younger generation Filipino Canadians who are who don't fit in that 
stereotype anymore. So yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's a journey in itself. Let's just put it that way. <laughs>